Um, we're talking about the secrets of being a finisher. And I, I, I ministered this particular portion, but God said, go ahead and add this to everything that we talked about thus far. Have you been um, finishing up lately? Yes. All right. Okay, I asked you to go to Matthew 5. I want to read... Um, I want to read out of Jeremiah. When you get to Matthew 5, say, I'm, I'm here. Okay, that was good. All right. And Jeremiah, I'm going to read out of Jeremiah 29, 11, then I'm going to put it up on the Amplified, I'm um, in the Message Bible. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thought that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Now, let's look at that in the message, uh, starting with verse 11, and we're going to read down to verse 14. Jeremiah 29, 11. I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you, not to abandon you. Plans to give you the future that you hope for. When you call on me, when you come and pray to me, I'll listen. When you come looking for me, you'll find me. Yes. When you get serious about finding me and want it more than anything else, I'll make sure you won't be disappointed. God decree, I'll turn things around for you. Now, isn't that awesome? Because God makes some promises to us, but, you know, we read, a lot of times we read verse 11, but we don't read verse 12 and 13 with it. He said, you know, I have plans for you to do you good. I'll take care of you. But when you come looking for me, you'll find me. Yes, when you get serious about finding me and want it more than anything else. So tonight I want to talk about, as we finish up, talking about a finisher. See, see, if I'm going to be a finisher, I got to want God more than anything else. I got to want what he, what, he, what he wants for me. And not only do I need to want it, but it needs to be, he needs to be a priority. Matthew 6.33 says, seek ye first. When? First. When? First. Now, he didn't say I couldn't seek other things, but he said, seek me what? First. So, we need to keep him first. And so, this scripture here lets me know that it is important for me to, if I want God's plan and purpose in my life, I have to put him in the right perspective. So, I want to talk about this truth because um, and, uh, this, is, this is one truth that I think has really, really benefited me the most. Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. I'm going to take you there. Then we're going to read a couple other scriptures. Matthew 5, 6 says, Blessed are those who what? And thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Let's read it again. Let's read it together. Ready? Read. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Okay, thank you. That was great. Go to Matthew chapter 7, please. Matthew 7 and verse 7. Jesus taught the truth all through the, um, the new covenant, all through the gospel, I should say. And, um, and you know, and I, I've taught this before, and I've, I've mentioned it a lot, that we only qualify to have what we're willing to pursue. Based, and I got that based on what Jesus teaches here. In Matthew chapter 7, it says, verse 7 says, what? Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you will find. Knock. And it will be open to you for everyone who does what? Ask. Receives. And everyone who seeks what? Find. And him who knocks what? Sure. So that lets me know, this scripture here lets me know that things are not just going to come to me. Wow. There has to be some seeking, yeah. some knocking, and some asking. I, don't, I can't just sit back and say, okay, God, I'm ready for you. Serve me. He said, no, no, no. Everything is available, but there's something that, this is called a spiritual, a spiritual law. A spiritual law is a basic principle that has, a con that has consequences based on a particular act. Mm, right. You got that? Yeah. The principle of consequences based on a particular act. This is the spiritual law. He said everyone who seeks, everyone who knocks, everyone who asks, there's a reciprocal that comes from that. So if I don't pursue something, if I don't per go after them, I'll never experience them. Amen. So I want to talk about that tonight as we wrap up this series because if I'm going to be a finisher, I have to have the right appetite first of all. See, I can't lose my appetite. See, a lot of say lose their appetite or the, their appetite. And see, there's something that we get we think we, that, that'll try to satisfy and be a substitute for what we really want. Let me tell you something. Water cannot satisfy my hunger for a hamburger. 
Are you listening? And see, a lot of times the enemy tries to bring us decoy and say, okay, well, you're satisfied. That's good enough. But it's not good enough. I got a legitimate hunger. A Big Mac won't satisfy a big gulp appetite, right? So, so whatever it is, whatever it is, he says, now, if you want to go for it. See, see, I believe in victory. I said, I believe in victory. I believe in making a comeback. I believe in coming back and staying back. But see, but see, I got to be hungry for that. See, I'm hungry for victory. I'm hungry. Listen, a Big Mac won't satisfy. I want some victory. I want to cross the finish line, and I want to finish cross the finish line with my head up and with my back, my, my shoulders straight and my mouth wide open. But I'm hungry for victory. I said I'm hungry for victory. I, I, don't, I don't do losing. I, that don't work for me. I'm hungry for victory. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to ask. I'm going to seek. I'm going to knock. I'm going to go where victory is. I'm going to go where, vi where victory folks live. I'm going to read what victory folks read. I'm going to watch what victory folks walk. I need to slow down here. I'm sorry, y'all. But you got to be hungry. You got to be hungry for it. You want a good marriage? You got to be hungry for a good marriage. You got to be hungry for it. You can't just, just try to have one. No, I'm serious. That's, this is a, it's a divine law. And see, he says, seek first my righteousness, which means he, he said, I got a way that I do it. My way of doing and being. So I'm hungry for that. So we want to be hungry for it. Let me, let me give you one more scripture. <laughs> give you another one. Give you another one. Okay, give me a screen on the screen. Psalm 107, verse 9. Man, this is good. Look at it. For he satisfies who? And he feels who? With what? Isn't that wonderful? Give me Isaiah 44. I just want to give you these and put them in your spirit. Make a note of them or get the CD later. I will pour water on him, water on him who is what? See, so let me ask you tonight. We'll just stop right there. Are you thirsty? How, how are you hungry for it? See, you know, you know, boy, you know, I remember back in the day before I was out, when I was out of control, I, I get up in the middle of the night, cold, I already got my, my, my house clothes on. I get up in the middle of the night because I want me some oatmeal cookies. And I, I put on, I, I, I put on my big old boots, I didn't put, you know, and, and big old parka, and I get in the car, put my hood on, and go get me an oatmeal cookie. Because... Because a saltine wouldn't satisfy that. I got control now. Amen. Because I said, boy, you crazy getting up here doing that. But my point is, I was hungry. I remember one time, you know, shoot. You ever go to the store? The store is right close to your house. You get down there, they're, not, they're all out. They didn't have... They, <laughs> <laughs> Some of y'all been there, okay, yeah. Some of y'all been there. You're like, oh, no, y'all didn't. And then you, check, then you sit there counseling yourself. Boy, you better go back home. You know you better go back home. You don't want nobody to see you like this. And what happened? You, you say, okay, cars ain't but about two miles down the street. <laughs> I'm like, boy. But you know what? Then you go in there and get that pet cookie, sit, sit in the parking lot, eat the whole thing before you get home. I was like, okay. But see, that's, that's what hunger will do. And see, we got to get hungry for the things of God. We got to get hungry. We got to get, get a spiritual appetite for the goodness of God. Good things. Everything we can desire is in there, but we got to be hungry for it. Okay, I want you to turn to Mark chapter 10. I want to take you through a couple scenarios. I preached on these before, but they, they just bring out in bold relief what this hunger is all about. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, let me ask you a question. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Okay, you can answer me too. When do you recall Jesus running folk down? Just let me hear you. Let me hear you. No? No? What about, you ever see Jesus run people, come here girl, let me, let me feed you, you need, you need to, no, 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 never. You ever think about that? You never see Jesus running folk down. In fact, you see Jesus walking past folks. That's what I'm going to show you in a minute. Here. You see him walking past folks until somebody stopped him. Just thank you, until somebody was thirsty. This is, a, this is, this is, you know what I like about this? See, you can't eat for me. 
You can't drink for me. I can't drink for you. I can't eat for you. That's what I like about the fact. This is, remember, I told you, our relationship with God is, 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 is personal, but it's not private, but it's personal. So you don't know what I was doing. You don't know what me and Jesus had going on earlier today. So that's why I can't judge you. You can't judge me. You don't know where I'm at with God. And ain't none of my business. Ain't none of your business. My business is to stay hungry. So Jesus never chased down. That, you know, that's a, that, that might be worth, worth writing down right there. Jesus never chased after anybody to give his goodness to. He said this. Whoever comes to me, I will not cast out and say, get away from me. Everybody who came to Jesus be healed, he healed them. So I want to take you through a couple scenarios in the gospel that you're familiar with and, and hope, I want this point, this point to really get a hold of you because everything that God has promised is in the book. Everything he promised, he's already said yes. And if he said yes, I can get hungry for it. Yes, yes. All right, Mark chapter 10, you there? All right. Now, let's look at this one. <laughs> Mark chapter 10, verse 46. Now, they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great multitude said, a bu say, a bunch of folks. A bunch of folks. B blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And then many warned him to be quiet. I said, be quiet. But he cried out all the more. Son of David, have mercy on me. He was what? Hungry. Blind Bartimaeus was what? Hungry. He was hungry, thirsty. That's good. <laughs> you know, um, a couple of weeks ago, I was, uh, we were down in L.A. And, uh, and uh, I wanted to get some air. So I, early morning, I got up and started walking and I was downtown. And, uh, and uh, well, it was, it was, yeah, walking downtown. And then um, there was a guy who, I guess he was what we call homeless. He, um, he started going in trash bins. And I didn't know if he was trying to recycle stuff. Or not, but he, he came out like this and, and, and he started eating what he had just salvaged out of the garbage can. And so I looked at him, he looked at me, and he went, <laughs> you know what? When you're hungry, you don't care. There was no shame in his game, because he probably like thinking, you, your hunger, you eating, it's not going to feed me. And he said, look, I got to do what I got to do, and I don't care who, I don't care what you think, I don't care what you say, I, I, I have to survive. I am eat. I found something that, that I can ingest and put into my body to satisfy my appetite. And he didn't care. And it was, it was downtown. It was a bunch of folks. He, he didn't care that people were looking at him going in the trash can. He didn't care that he saw people saw him take something out of the trash, put a paper back, and eat. Hunger says, you know what? This is mine. See, that's what, what the guy was here saying. See, you're telling me to be quiet, but you don't know how hungry I am. And you can't control my hunger, okay? See, first of all, you're not going to satisfy my hunger, so I got to do what I got to do to get what I got to have. And see, I said, I wish, this, I wish we would get this way to where, you know, I don't care what you think about me. Yeah, I'm going to pray. Yeah, I'm going to pray like I ain't got no sense at all, and I can care less who don't like it. Yeah, that's some people think y'all crazy because you in church on Wednesday night. I don't care. Listen, I'm hungry, baby. I'm hungry, and I got to do what I got to do to get this hunger thing satisfied because Jesus said it's a spiritual law. If I seek, knock, and ask, I will receive. So, so it's not on Jesus. It's on me. Listen, I've been, I had this lump all this time. I'm just, you know, being, uh, 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 what do you call it? Hypothetical. Thank you. That's, that's the only big word I'm going to use tonight. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, been, I had this lump. See, I'm hungry to get this thing out of my body. I, I, I had surgery, and the thing grew back. So, listen, I want to get a surgeon that, that, that never, ever have to do a redo. 
I'm hungry to have no lumps on my arm. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. And so I'll do what I have to do. And what other people opinion of me, of me right now, it doesn't really matter. Now that guy, I don't know if that guy, I don't know how long he's been like that. I don't know how long he will be like that. But I tell you what, if he take that thing over to Jesus, he'll be fine. And I say, wow, that's, that was a good illustration there. There was no shame because he was hungry. It's amazing how the Bible says stuff like, you know, um, uh, even, you know, I'm not, I'm not telling you go out and do this, but the Bible says um, don't be drunk in excess, but be drunk in the spirit. You know why it says that? Because drunk people don't care either. They don't care what you think. <laughs> you remember how y'all used to do, you know, uh, <laughs> No, drunk, people, drunk people don't care. They come. I remember we was in Simon Seep and this dude, I guess it was doing a holiday. This guy was drunk. And he, hey, Reverend Friendly, all throughout the place. <laughs> I didn't know who the man was. They never seen the man. They ain't seen nothing. Remember that? He all drunk. Hey, Reverend Friendly, boy, I like to listen to you preach. <laughs> it's a true story. He didn't care. He didn't care. But see, when you get inebriated, inebriated, yeah. intoxicated, Drunk. <laughs> you don't care. You lose all sense of um, uh, of uh, uh, what inhibition. Okay, that's that's a bit that's a, inhibition. That's two. Well, no, that was his. That was his. That was his. But you, yeah, see, you're not you're not all your restraint is gone. All that pride is gone. Just like, you know what? And so that's why he said, don't be drunk like that, but be drunk in the, in the spirit. Be free in Jesus. Amen. Somebody say hungry. hungry. So this man here, he said, he said they said, um, um, they warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more. He cried out all the more. So he said, listen, man, uh, excuse me, but uh, I'm hungry for my healing, okay? Look at verse 49. So Jesus stood still and did what? Commanded him. He did what? Commanded him. Now what's the difference between command? Why didn't he just call him? Why did he have to command him? Can I give my, uh, my little humble opinion? I mean, this is just where I got it. Okay, so he stood there and commanded him to be called and then they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer, rise, he's calling you. Now notice this. Now it was a multitude of people there. And the Bible said Jesus commanded who? Him. So Jesus said, You. Tell that man right there, that man right there, the man with the pink shirt on, the white collar, the one with them cufflinks. Him. The one, him. Tell him to come here. Yeah. The Bible says he, 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 commanded, he commanded that he be called. Yeah. He, there was a bunch of folks. Right. But he commanded, he picked him out. Yeah. Wow. He picked him out, out of all those people. Why? He didn't say you. He didn't say y'all. He said you. Come here. God will pass over. I don't care. He'll pass over. Don't you ever think that, well, you know, I ain't been in the church long. God ain't looking at all that. God will pass over multitudes that need him to get to those who want him. That's my church right there. I'm telling you the truth. And, and this is just not, this is not no hype. See, that's just why you can't be concerned about whatever the folk doing, what people ain't doing. Forget all of that. You got to let Jesus, I know you got your eyes on me. I know you... He, there was a multitude. Look at there. He said, he said, he said, he said, he said <laughs> look at verse 49. Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called, and they called the blind man, saying, Be of good cheer, rise. He is calling you. Let's do that again. <laughs> Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called, and they called the blind man, saying, To him, not to them. To him, be of good cheer, rise, he is calling you. 
He said, you're the only one in here. You're the only one in here Jesus wants to minister to right now. You're the only one. And see, and see what if he would have listened to those folks talking about be quiet. Be quiet. You didn't have to do all of that. And see, that's why, see, people don't know your pain. I said, people don't know your pain. People don't know how long you've been struggling with something, trying to get out of here. And here's your deliverance coming right now. Man, please, you better shut up. You better, you better shut up. You better get out of my face with that. I'm serious. I'm serious. He said, he said, Ryan, he is calling. He didn't say he's calling y'all. He's calling you. Picked him out, y'all. Picked him out. And so one of the tricks, if we're going to be finishers, we got to keep our eyes on the prize. Because the devil tried to distract us. Well, it's her fault. It's her fault. It's his fault. And if they, had, if they had done this, if they had done that, man, shoot, forget that. Jesus is the individual. Picked him out. That really blessed me. Picked him out. See, so whatever you do, that's why he said what you do in secret, I rewarded you openly. We don't know what this man was doing before he got down there. But I know one thing, he made up his mind. When I hear about Jesus, I'm, 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 I, uh, I'm going to make my request known unto him. Second Corinthians, Second Chronicles 16, I says, the eyes of the Lord. This is what's happening tonight. See, this is why, you know, I, 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 I talk about it all the time. This is why your praise and your worship and your and your adoration and your and your and your thinking about him and and thinking about listen I, I know see I don't need adult supervision. The Holy Ghost tells me, boy, that's wrong. Fix that. See, he sees all of that. He sees all of that. He sees all of that. I'm hungry for God. Why? So, so I want to please him. I'm not trying to keep some church doctrine or, or, or the little black book. No, 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 no. No, I just want to please him. And, and if I please him, everybody else will be all right. But, but see, he so put that scripture back up there, please. Second Chronicles 16, 9. The eyes of the Lord search the whole earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. What a fool you have been. From now, you will be a war. Well, he said, God is looking. God is searching even now. He, searched, he knows the thoughts and intents of our heart. Even right here tonight. He knows why you're here. He knows whether you came to hear from him or to see somebody. He knows. He knows. He knows. And so, so we need to make the adjustment that God, you know what? You know what? Look, I'm too old to be playing games now. You know, really. You know, I'm too old to be playing games. And so, and so you know, it's all about, you know, like that song. I told her, I said, we can sing that every Sunday. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. At some point, it's got to get to the point where it's all about him. Because I can't control you. I cannot dictate what you do. I can only dictate and control what I do. If you don't like me, you're just missing out on a good person. Because I can enrich your life. Amen. But I got to be hungry. Say, I got to be hungry. Yeah. Yeah, let me show you another one. Um... Oh, no, we're not done with that one, are we? No, no, we got to go down there. Okay, okay. So, verse 50. Oh, no, no, no. Let me, let me get this point. So, go back, Pastor. Go back. Am I going too fast? Okay. Verse 49 again. And Jesus stood what? And did what? Okay, okay. I, wrote, I asked myself a question here. What is directing Jesus' ministry right now? The thirst and the hunger. Bart's thirst and hunger is now directing Jesus' ministry. Jesus was on his way to wherever he was going. Bartimaeus made him stop. I mean, I didn't think make him stop. Well, I guess he did. So his hunger will cause some things to cease in my life. My hunger will cause some things to cease in my life. Wow, okay. Okay, let's read on. Verse 50. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. But Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? Okay, let's do it again, y'all. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? 
This man got a private audience with all these folks out there. You know what the mother six folks out there? All these people. And Jesus singled him. I, I want to drive that point home. See, Jesus, Jesus will single you out. We call it favor. He will single you out. He will turn some stuff around just for you. He will pick you. He will pick you from the back and bring you to the front. And don't care who don't like it. Don't you know some of the people like, hi. Hi, I've been in church every Sunday. How he, how he get up here in front of me? God doesn't look at it. We look at the outward. And, and we need to, you know, we need to respect that. You know, we don't want to offend anybody. But God looks on the heart. This man cried out. He was hungry. Jesus said, if you, you seek after me with all your heart, you'll find me. They that hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be filled. So what's your appetite like? What's your appetite like? Don't let anything steal your appetite. Hallelujah. Then Jesus said, verse 52, then Jesus said to him, go your way. Your faith has made you what? And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Say, God pours water on the thirsty. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. And he will, he will pass over a multitude to get to somebody who's hungry and who's thirsty. Doesn't matter. What's driving you today? What's causing you to put your winter boots on and go down to the store? <laughs> you feel like... You feel like, man, I, okay, I, you know, normally I have my routine with God, but I didn't get a chance to do it today. Do you feel like something just missing? Do you feel a growl? Okay, golly, ooh, that's, that's, that's your spirit. It's like, okay, I need, I need to be fed. You know, you sit there, you know, watching Final Four, you're watching 15 games, and it's some, so your spirit starts growling. Oh, God, I need to be fed. I need to be fed. You know how your body tells us we need to be fed at certain times? I think we can develop that spiritual appetite to where, you know, I need to be fed, man. Yeah. Or, you, or you're watching, you know, you ever, <clears throat> you, you ever went to a movie and paid your money and you got in there and, and your spirit was like, mm. I can't believe we're sitting here watching this. Yes. How many of y'all ever got up and walked out? I did too. I like, oh, okay, okay, that's too much. The, the previews are too much for me right now. <laughs> she likes to watch the preview. I just like to go in there and watch the movie. She got to, she got to get in there. And, I got to find my seat. <laughs> I ain't trying to watch the... Anyway. But I go with her. Because I have an appetite. To... I don't know, something. I was telling her the other day, I said, you know, we are so different. It ain't even funny. We celebrate our anniversary. I'm like, we are so different. I was sitting up there thinking, like, God, we different. I don't even know how we put up with each other. We're so, <laughs> we're so different. We're different. I mean, we're so different. And we just learn how to flow. <laughs> it's, it's a, I mean, I just kind of sat back and like, God. God. I don't know. She, she, need, she need a medal of honor staying with me for 33 years, man. Don't y'all laugh. Y'all different, too. Okay, let's go to, uh, let's look at another one. Go to Luke chapter 5. Hungry. Stay hungry. Say, Pastor, I've been believing God for this thing to happen a long time. Stay hungry. Amen. Keep feeding your faith. Keep feeding yourself. Keep listening to other folk testimony about, about something. Keep, stay hungry. Stay hungry for victory. God, increase your appetite. Increase your desire. Desire is a, so, desire is a product of association. Keep, keep looking at something that, that, that tells you it's possible for you. I don't care how long it's been. Come on, be a finisher. All that stuff I said over the last five weeks, be a finisher. Don't quit. I said don't quit. Stay hungry. 
you know, if you got to get you another personal trainer, spiritual, you know, get you one. And, and, and if you got to just shut stuff down for a week, just go on a, a spiritual furlough. Do what you got to do, but, but keep your appetite. Don't you quit. You already know God can do it. So, and you know he'll do it for you too. If he, if he did it for anybody else, he got to do it for you. What he does for one in principle, he's got to do for you. Stay hungry. I don't care how many people around you fail. You stay hungry. Amen. Am I too violent tonight? No. All right, all right, y'all know, y'all know. Okay, okay, Luke chapter 5, right? Verse 1, here's another one. So it was that the multitude pressed, say press, press. pressed about him to hear the word of God that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. Now, word, the word pressed means they put forth effort. It means they forced themselves. They press. They they force themselves. They say, "We I gotta hear this word. I gotta I gotta get why? Because this word create it stimulates my appetite." Mm. You ever go back to Lone Star during the first month of January? You know, while we're fasting, you go by Lone Star and all that just come up in the car. You, it just it just come all up in the car and, and it just it stimulates your appetite, doesn't it? You you ever feel your your your, your, your I know the word, but I wasn't trying to give him two words tonight. I was just give him the one. I was going to say you spit, but that's okay. I got all these proper people here. Okay, but, but, but sometimes that, that smell, just the smell, just the smell start, 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 start stimulating him. And you ever notice how your salivary glands, how they start working? And you're like, golly, I, ain't got, I didn't put nothing in here. But see, this is what this word is. This is what this word will do. You could, this word can be so real to you, all of a sudden you can start tasting this victory. You can start tasting it. You just, you just see yourself. You just see, you just see yourself coming out. You just see yourself with the mic testifying. I, 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 I just see it. I'm going to buy me a t-shirt saying victory all over the place. What? You, just, you just see it. So you ever, you ever, you ever, I mean, I mean really, this is, I'm not being facetious. facetious. Yeah. So, so you ever, you ever, you ever be something be so real to you? You, you, you pray, and this thing is so in your spirit that you see. Y'all know what I'm talking about. This thing is so ain't nothing happened out here yet. It's, it's all on the inside, and, and, and kind of like when a woman pregnant, she thought, oh yeah, oh yeah, what's that right there? I just feel like something, something moving on the inside. So, y'all, okay? I'm sorry. I feel pretty good tonight, man. Cause, cause I, I've been feeding on this word. I'm, I, I'm, I'm full, man. And, and, and subject, you, you can't see a thing. Everybody like, well, what's wrong with him? Why did? No, no. I got. I, I just, I just, I just feel it. I got to go sit down. Cause, cause I just, I just. Oh, I can't help. Oh, it's moving. Something's moving. Something changing. Something moving. Something changing. I mean, I can't explain it. All I know is, all I know, I just know it. I can't, I can't articulate it. Something's real. But see. That's what that, that word. Yeah. Oh, I, love, I love the word of God so much. I, I'm, I'm, I, I got to confess, y'all. I'm addicted. I'm addicted. I don't know what to tell you. I ain't trying to get no deliverance either. I'm addicted to this word. I, I, I'm addicted to it. I, I, I spend at least two hours a day in the word. I, well, I'm not going to give you my whole regiment now, but it's, it's, I'm addicted to it. And so there's some things that I see that I can't see. I see with my other eyes, my eagle eyes. But, but they say they press. And this is why I want, you know, this is what I, I wish I could just cut everybody's head open and pull this in there and then sew you back up. Or put that thing in you, like Iron Man, put the, <laughs> that little thing in there, and then you, you know, I, I wish I could do that. <laughs> I wish it were that easy. But if I can get you to develop an appetite for this word, I ain't talking about no foolishness. I'm talking about for the pure word of God. It, it, will, it will change a whole lot of things. It will begin to judge things for you, like, oh, wow, no, I, I can't, no. No, can't do that. Then it will check you, when you even when you want to be honorary. 
you know, when you want to just be honorary, mad, and have your way, and fuss at people, and ignore people, and, and you know how we do. <laughs> that word would check you and say, boy, you better, you better recognize <laughs> that word to talk to you, won't it? I was, uh, I tell my wife yesterday, um, the guy at the, uh, the, 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 my clothes, he called and said, okay, your, your, your stuff is ready, your stuff is ready. And, you know, and, uh, well, that's how he talks. He said, pastor, he called me pastor. Yeah, Pastor, <laughs> your clothes ready. Okay. I said, well, golly, we just dropped him off. Oh, no, we're ready. My wife said, he's trying to get paid. He's trying to get paid. So anyway, so, so I told him, I said, okay, I said, I'll be over there tomorrow, whenever it was. It was the next day. And so, so the, tomorrow came, and I was really busy. I'm like, I'm, I'm not going. Not, you may not think this is big, but this is big for me. And so, uh, and so I wasn't, I, was, I told him I'll be there tomorrow. Well, next thing I know, it was tomorrow came and almost went. And uh, I said, oh, man, I told, told Mr. You. His name is You, Mr. You. I said, I told Mr. You I was coming. And I said, oh, well, you know, he probably don't care. Then something my spirit said, you told him you're going to be there tomorrow. So I called Mr. You. I said, hey, Mr. Yo. <laughs> you ever notice when you talk to somebody with an accent? <laughs> why do we do that? I don't know why we do that. I go, hey, Mr. Yo. Like, I'm not going to be there today, but I cut the bar. He said, oh, okay, Pastor. <laughs> now, I say that because that word starts checking you. Because God said, you want me to keep my word. Yeah. See, a lot of people, God can't keep a word with them because they don't keep their word. See, if you don't value your word, God, it's hard for you to value his word. Because we judge, we judge people based on how we are. Did you know that? Yeah, we judge people based on how we are. That's why some people have so many problems. They think everybody don't like them. They think everybody mean. That's because you don't like folks and you mean. And you, and you think everybody is like you. Is that the truth? Yeah. Yeah. And so, and so, so we, have to, we have to get some integrity with, our, just with ourselves. We need to get some integrity with ourselves, and then that will, that will cause us to have a greater appreciation. When God said it, that's it. That's it. Okay, I'm, I'm not going to charge y'all for that piece right there. That was, yeah, but it's the truth. So work on your own integrity. I mean, if you can't keep your word, just tell them. I can't keep it right now. At least tell them. At least they know. Okay, I don't you know. Because I'm, I'm bad, you know, I expect, when people tell me something, I expect them to do what they say. Because I'm like, they didn't have to tell me that. I mean, I mean, I'm not perfect, but, you know, I try to be. All right. Where y'all, how y'all get me off on that? What are we talking about? Press. Okay, yeah. They press to hear the word of God. So what does it mean, press? That means that uh, they force themselves. So it's not always convenient. We won't always feel like it. It may cost us something. Yeah, look at verse 2. Okay, so he saw some boats standing by. That's, I don't want to talk about that. That's what Peter and them, Peter let him use his boat, and Peter, and he, he gave Peter something good. Okay, look at verse 17. Now it happened on a certain day that as he was teaching, what was Jesus doing? Teaching. Okay, that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come out of every town in Galilee, Judea, Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. The power of the Lord was present to heal them. I think it was present to heal everybody in the room. What do you think? Yes. To them. Yeah, to them. Not, not to him, to them. Okay. Now, do we see anyone getting healed? Not yet. Now, that tells me you, that the power can be available. It can be all around you. It can be there present for you and you not partake of it. Amen. Right? Okay. Now watch this. Verse 18. Then behold, men brought on a bed a man who was paralyzed whom they sought to bring in and lay before him. And when they could not find how they might bring him in because of the crowd, 
they went up on the housetop and let him down with his bed through the tiling into the mist before Jesus. Now look at verse 19. It says, and when they could not find how, Old King James said, they sought means. They could not find how. So they looked for some ways to how they may bring him in. So they went to the front door, couldn't get in. They didn't turn around and go home. They went to the back door, couldn't get in, but they didn't turn around and go home. They went to the windows. Couldn't get in, but they didn't go home. So that no did not cause them to lose their appetite. All the people that was in the way didn't cause them to lose their appetite. See, a finisher says, no today does not mean no. See, so just because no is in front of me, I'm not going to lose my appetite. I'm going to, I'm going to seek, the, I like the old King James, said, they sought ways to get him in. They started thinking about it. I'm sure they sat down and like, okay, 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 golly, all these folks in here, all these folks in here, good Lord, they just in here. And then, then the people, the teachers and the, the doctors of the law, they weren't in there. They weren't in there to get healed. They weren't in there. They were in there to try to catch Jesus in his word and try to prove him wrong and try to get something. They can go out and say, guess what I heard that man say, that crazy man in there say. Huh. It was in the way. What do you do when you can't get in? What do you do when no stares you in the face? What do you do when rejection hits you? I mean, you was hot to trot, and then rejection hits you. Do you fall apart like a $2 watch? What do you do when, when, when you pray, you fast it for 30 days, and you say, okay, I'm going back to the doctor now. I'm going to go, doc, check this, check this, check this. <laughs> and they check it, and it's, well, it's just like it was last time you were here. <laughs> what do you do then? What do you do? What do you do when, it, when everything in you, I mean, you had that, <laughs> what I was saying a minute ago, and you just knew, oh, this is my day. This is the day. Yeah. This is my day. Yeah. This ain't the day. This is my day. And you go, and then you get there, and then they tell you, no, it ain't. Do you seek ways? Do you still pursue? Do you still, are you still knocking? Are you still asking? Are you still seeking? Or do you give up? Do you listen? Your, listen, your answer, listen, your story. I'm going to tell you this Sunday. You're going to hear it again. But see, your, sto your story has not been told yet. We just on chapter two. Listen, we got a long way to go on this journey here. Your story has not been told. Your story has not been told until you write the final chapter. Hey, Jesus. Tell me no. You tell me no all you want. Listen, I'm not. I'm not going. I'm not going anywhere. Isn't that? That's what the woman with the issue of blood did. I'm not going to talk about my girl tonight. But that's what she did. She 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 went to all the doctors, spent all the money, did everything. But she still would not quit. She was hungry to get her healing. Golly, am I getting too excited for Wednesday night? So they stop me. They're like, okay, no, no. And see, see, I love this because, I, because, see, this is why you got to pick your friends. You got to have the right friends. Because I'm sure my boy on that stretcher was like, okay, look, I'm tired, y'all. I'm tired. And they're like, no, we can carry you way over here. We ain't carrying you back. <laughs> we ain't carrying you back. This is a one-way trip right here. Okay? <laughs> and so, <laughs> it's one way. And so, and so, but see, this is what, see, when you, who, who do you run with? Do the people you run with, do they encourage you when you just want to just cash it all in? Or do they like, say, yeah, dog, that's how I feel too, man, that's how I feel. No, do, do, you need people in your life that's going to lift you up, pick you up, and carry you if they have to. You got any four, how many of y'all got four crazy friends? I, I'm not talking about sophisticated friends or folks that, that got to analyze them. You don't need them. You need some crazy friends. Four crazy friends that you don't even want to take home. Your mom would be like, who is that? You, you, you got to have at least a couple of them in your life. Mama, this is my friend from church. Oh, okay. All right. Then. <laughs> no. See, faith sometimes. See, faith sermons don't make sense. 
and sense sermon don't make faith. You'll get that on the way home. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was good right there. You... Glory to God. Okay, so they couldn't bring him in. And um, so they went up on top of the house and opened up a roof, original skylight. They were hungry for the power. And because they would not allow themselves or their friend to lose their appetite, can you imagine how much it took to go up on this man's house or these people's house? When they could not verse nine, when they could not find how they might bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the house and let him down with his bed through the tiling into the midst of Jesus. And you know what happened after that. The power was present to heal. But he's the only one that got healed. You know why? Of course you do. Because he was hungry. So this lets me know, I don't have to, I don't, I'm not, see, I don't let other people set the bar of possibilities for me. Amen. This is a lot in this story, but I think the appetite increased all the more because I think they could still hear Jesus, but they're like, I, I just, we just got to get in front of him. We just got to get in front of him. And because they didn't give up and they stayed hungry for the victory, Somehow, God started moving, and I believe that God, God caused, caused favor to come on the folk where they didn't get upset. They probably was upset while they were sitting there watching, you know, stuff, you know, towel falling and, and, and stuff. I'm like, what the, hey, what's going on? What? I know them folks end up, I know they end up on my roof. You know, Jesus, praise the Lord, Jesus. Ooh, somebody gonna get, we gonna open up a can of whoop in here. Cause they turn, they turn up the roof, baby, lock it out. But Jesus, hey, praise the Lord. But then when, when they let him down, cause that hole would get bigger, they had to let a grown man down. A grown, a grown man with a bed, cot, okay. So that hole had to be a leap out, what, about 12 feet long? About five, five feet wide? That was, that was. And I know the owner was steaming. But something happened to him when he saw that miracle. He was like, okay, praise him. This miracle happened in my house. <laughs> Jesus did a miracle in my house, okay? Okay, yeah, right through there, right through there, right there. <laughs> Listen. You know how we do. I'm going to tell everybody, it happened in my house, okay? It's not a church in my house. All I'm trying to say is, see, y'all hungry because y'all here. That's why you're here. And, and the hunger to hear the teaching of the word of God. The teaching always precedes miracle. That's why we have miracles. Teaching always precedes miracle. Don't ever, see, a lot of people, don't, they don't want to sit long enough for the teaching. You know, we have our miracle service. Everybody can't get everybody in here. But we have a teaching. Yeah, I mean, folks are like, Fuck, I, ain't, I ain't got, I got time. Just, just, just put your hands on me. You know, pull something on me and, and, and do your thing. But they don't want to sit. Here's how, that's why I started that, okay, do your homework. And, and we have one person, they, by the time they did the homework, by the time they didn't even need anybody to pray for them. The Word did it. So, so I want to encourage you to develop an appetite for that word like you never had before. Like you never had before. And if you had before, I mean, I mean, increase it. If you got it now, stay with it. Don't, don't get weary in well-doing. God is faithful to his word. Praise God. Did you get blessed tonight? Yeah. Hallelujah. Let's thank God. Let's thank God for his word. Let's, would you stand with me, please? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And for all you that's facing a no right now, maybe the door closed on you. Maybe the window closed on you. Don't you give up. Don't you cave in. Don't you quit. Don't you turn back and walk away. Glory to God. Jesus said, you speak to the mountain and it shall move. Glory to the Lamb of God. Come on, let's just open up our mouth and thank him. Thank him for his word tonight because something happened. Something happened and grow, something is growing in you tonight. Some situations you thought were impossible, now they seem possible. We're about to speak to those things in just a minute. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just like blind Bartimaeus, something may have told you to settle down and don't you cry out and don't you, don't you raise your hope. No, the devil is a liar. Jesus watches over his word to perform it. They may have told you no. They may have said you may have tried it one time, two times, three times. But I'm telling you, this is your time tonight. Faith has come to open up the door. Faith has come to drive back the storm. Faith has come tonight to open up the roof. We open up an open heaven over your life tonight. Open heaven over your family. Open heaven over your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we praise you that you're the God that is faithful. We praise you and thank you, Lord. We're not at a loss anymore. We thank you, Lord. You know how to pick us out tonight. Thank you, Lord. You know how to bring us up to the front in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to think about. I want you to think about what door needs to open for you. I want you to think about you tried maybe you tried several things where well, you about to tear the roof off the sucker I mean the roof off <laughs> you about to tear the roof you on the path I didn't tried everything I know to do well okay just look up just look up maybe you're like blind Bartimaeus and people have told you come on honey you can't believe that come on you need to just back up off of that no you get ready to cry out now you get ready, uh, you, you, you getting hungry again. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. What was hard for you is not hard for him. So I want you to put that in your crosshair. We get ready to shout. We get ready to shout. <laughs> we get ready to move this mountain because we're hungry for victory, aren't we hungry? We're hungry for victory. We're hungry for breakthrough. We're thirsty, hallelujah. Father, we're not going to be satisfied until we're our thirst is quenched by the spirit of the washing of the water of the word. We're not going to satisfy our hunger until the bread of life is manifested in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on, we're hungry for victory. Some of us need some peace in our life. We're hungry for some peace now. Come on, we're hungry for some godly direction now. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, we're getting, we're getting our groove back tonight. We're getting our appetite back tonight. We're going to eat like we're supposed to eat here tonight. Glory to God. Say this with me. Father, in Jesus' name. Tonight, my heart is stirred. I want my appetite back. I want, I want my hunger back. I want my thirst back. So starting right now, I begin to thirst for you. Please show me every substitute that I've allowed to come into my life. Every substitute, I kick it out now in the name of Jesus. I open myself up for the authentic thirst quencher, appetite quencher, right now, in the name of Jesus. Lord, you, you healed blind, blind Bartimaeus. You healed the man on the stretcher because they were hungry, because they were thirsty. Lord, I'm thirsty tonight. Lord, I'm hungry tonight. Oh, my God, Lord. I don't know. Maybe your healing. Maybe your children. Maybe your finances. 
maybe your marriage, maybe your peace of mind. Come on, on three, on three, we're going to cry out, we're going to shout, we're going to get our stuff back in the name of Jesus. Woo! Are you ready? On three, one, two, three, shout unto God with the voice of time. Lord, we cry. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We're not going to let this thing die down. Oh, yeah. Lord, we thank you. Yes. Yeah. I know some people going to try to going to try to shh me down. But it's not going to work. I know too much. Jesus said, whoever comes to me, I'll no wise cast out. He will, he will walk past a multitude of people that need him to get to those who want him. Before we go further tonight, you may be in here and, and you need God. You need God in your life. I said, you need God in your life. I want to encourage you to turn your need into a want because he's a perfect gentleman he said I stand at the door and I knock if you open up I'll come in if you don't want me I'll just keep on stepping that's what that's the way God is but I want to encourage you tonight don't don't uh, man God don't don't walk past him don't don't let him walk past you don't let him walk past you if you're here tonight and you're not where you need to be with Jesus what does I mean by that Jesus is not he is not a priority in your life. Maybe you prayed years ago, but right now your life is not where it needs to be. You know, you already know in your heart. Like I said, sometimes that word will check. You already know in your heart, I am not where I need to be with God. I need to change some things in my life. Jesus, I need to be, I need to make you priority. You used to be, but now you're not, or, or I, I've always heard about it. But what I'm telling you tonight, just like what we read in the Bible. That's why I come straight out of that book. The Bible says he records those things for our learning, for our understanding. Whatever you see him doing in the Bible, he does today. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I want to pray for people that say, Pastor, I need Jesus in my life. Or I'm backslidden. I want God in my life. Will you give me the opportunity? Most of all, will you do yourself a huge, huge service. Thank you, Father. You say, Pastor, I'm not where I need to be with God. I need to get my life together. I want to turn my life around. I want you to leave where you're standing and, and come stand at the base of my platform today, tonight. If I'm talking to you, if the Spirit of God is witnessing, if you have a tug on your heart that I need to, I need to change some things in my life I want you to do that right now you may be struggling with alcohol you may be struggling with drugs you may be struggling with some things that you really trying to get out you're really trying to get away from now's the time tonight he wants you he wants you to he wants you maybe you tried three things maybe